Good evening. I'm John Cox. Welcome to Drunk... I don't even know the name of my own goddamn channel. Why am I doing this? Give me a sec. Hi there. Welcome to Alcoholic Movies with your host, John Cox. The channel on YouTube where I get drunk and review movies with you. Hopefully you're drunk as well. Tonight we are reviewing Mission Impossible 6 Fallout. Just a background on myself and my repertoire with movies. I've watched movies my entire life. I have written reviews for radio stations, for review sites, and for message board forums as well. I like to think that I have a very good dialogue with movies. I'd like to transfer that to the YouTube format. So, I hope you enjoy. Like I said, the point of this channel is for me to get drunk and review movies. Hopefully I can entertain you with my witty banner, witty dialogue, and witty opinions. Hopefully witty doesn't ever turn into shitty. <clears throat> Anyways, why the hell am I doing this? Oh yeah, Mission Impossible 6, Fallout. Stars Tom Cruise, of course, the man himself. Um, also stars Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, and Rebecca Ferguson. All of these actors do very well. Of course, that's the first thing I'd like to talk about, is the cast. And where else to start with with the cast other than Tom Cruise himself? Tom Cruise is awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen any of the other Mission Impossible movies. I hope that you have, certainly. But all of these movies involve him doing ridiculous things with a camera in front of him. So when it comes to the cast, of course, Tom Cruise, you can't leave him out. Tom Cruise is, in my opinion, one of the last remaining movie stars on the planet. If you look at Marvel and what superhero movies have done with cinema these days, it's actually quite depressing. People don't go to the movies anymore to see a certain actor's name. They don't go with the headline Sylvester Stallone on top of the title. They don't go to see Arnold Schwarzenegger on top of the title. They don't go to see Alfred Hitchcock's name on top of the title. Now people go to the movies these days because they want to see Iron Man do things in front of a green screen, which drives me fucking nuts. I would rather watch Tom Cruise in Lederhosen do what he does on set, doing his own stunts, breaking his foot while doing a jump from one building to another, than watch Chris Hemsworth make quips and witty banter in front of a green screen dressed in pajamas. Honestly, this shit with superheroes really pisses me off because it's killing action movies. That's what it does. And you guys suck it up. That's what you do. You go to the theater for two and a half hours. You watch a bunch of people in pajamas talk to each other like 12 and 13 year olds and then they are CGI doing the most ridiculous things ever without ever actually performing or doing things that action movies deserve. <clears throat> what Tom Cruise is doing with these Mission Impossible movies is something that Hollywood is too afraid to do nowadays. As I said earlier, there is a scene where Tom Cruise jumps from one building to a lower building. In actuality, he did this. Running, jumps, lands, terribly bad, breaks his foot, slamming against the building, climbs up, keeps going on with the scene, and this is the cut that's in the actual movie. Robert Downey Jr. has never done anything like this ever. So it kind of pisses me off that superheroes are considered the creme de la creme of action movie cinema these days, when really they're not. Action movies are dead. But thanks to Tom Cruise, in this movie, he is proving what you can still do with the medium. Do you, ever, do you guys ever remember Predator? Do you guys remember those old Rambo movies when they were actual actors doing actual things on the actual camera because they were actual entertainers? Nowadays, as I said, they're not making movies like this anymore. Some of the action scenes in this movie are absolutely outstanding. There's a halo jump with Henry Cavill, who's awesome in this movie. He plays Walker, who is the other agent that is combating crews to get these cores of plutonium. There are three cores of plutonium that the IMF team must hunt down themselves. Now, what's nice about this story is it is brisk. Thank God that I didn't see one superhero in tights in this whole movie. This is grounded, this is realistic, with real emotion, and it's raw. 
It is, like I said, the camera takes you right in front of the action, and you feel like you're in front of the action, and that's what's great about movies like this. It is unabashed, it is unafraid, and it is intelligent with how it exclaims its visual poetry to you, the viewer. And that's exactly what this movie is. It's visual poetry. The stunts, the fighting, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can see that there is gusto, there is momentum, there is movement, there is excellent preparation that these actors have done to make these fight scenes look like they are actually happening. And it's absolutely fabulous. Vanessa Kirby plays the White Widow, and she's actually very underrated in this movie. She is an arms dealer that Ethan Hunt must connect with to get to the plutonium cores. And man, is she sexy. My God. Also, I'd just like to say, I'm comfortable with my sexuality, okay? I'm a male. I like women, okay? Hot women really enthuse me. But when it comes to movies, much like Mel Gibson in his prime, I really like good-looking male actors leading the film as well. Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill are gorgeous leads, and they are absolutely amazing and phenomenal to watch on screen. Henry Cavill, I'm surprised that um, it's taken him this long to come into the movie scene with a role that exudes the personality and act... <clears throat> Sorry, that's the beer talking. Oh, I may switch to water. Henry Cavill, it is absolutely awesome that he finally gets a role that he can exude the personality and acting ability that he has. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the film The Man From Uncle, but uh, Henry Cavill is very good in that as well. I feel like as Superman, he is quite hindered as an actor because Superman is the most boring piece of shit superhero that you could ever imagine. But uh, with this movie, Henry Cavill does an excellent job of being a character himself displaying many sides and many dimensions without going into spoiler territory. Of course, the regular players are all still here. Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, they all do a good job being the supporting cast around Ethan. Of course, this also is a Mission Impossible film that is most centered around Ethan. He is very much an active protagonist in this movie. Also, I would hope that you guys get used to seeing Ethan Hunt run because he runs probably a couple hundred miles in this movie. And goddamn, does Tom Cruise run awesome. I mean, just watching Tom Cruise run, I could watch a two and a half hour movie of Tom Cruise running a marathon and be content. <sighs> Anyways, I want to talk more about Christopher McQuarrie, the director, because what he does with the camera is awesome. He is not like born director Paul Greengrass, where everything is shaky and moving and ridiculous. Instead, he does a really good job of keeping the camera still so you can take in all the visuals at once. You can actually tell what is going on during action scenes. And I tell you, that makes a action movie so much better when you can see the choreography in front of you. You can see the work that the actors put into fighting each other. You can see the stunts and how beautiful they are when a man smashes through a bathroom mirror. It is absolutely fabulous. There's also another sequence where Tom Cruise is driving a motorcycle through Paris, and oh my goodness, this is just ridiculous. Tom Cruise is a nut. He is actually on this motorcycle. He's actually driving through these cars. He's actually doing his own stunts. He actually crashes into a car, flies off the motorcycle, and lands extremely hard to the point where you are grimacing in pain in your audience chair. <sighs> I'd love to see Iron Man do that. Sorry, gotta get a refill. Oh. I promise that this is beer. Let's talk about the big stunt. Because there is a huge stunt in this movie that is awesome, where Tom Cruise is jumping from a building to another building, and he actually did this. I swear to God, I think he made his own coffee on set. That's how committed this guy is. He doesn't have a coffee fetcher making his own coffee. He doesn't have some lame-ass stunt guy doing his own stunts. Tom Cruise does it all in this movie, and it is awesome. Um, I, all I've been doing is gushing about this movie, of course. Um, there are some things that I didn't really care for. Mainly the one thing is 
the only flaw with this film is the cliches of the Mission Impossible formula. Every Mission Impossible movie has like, you know, four, five, six, seven, ten billion twists. It does get a little repetitive when you can even call out when a twist is coming. Because the movie, uh, with the repetition of the formula, this is, after all, the sixth movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. I think you can tell when twists are coming. It's certainly, it's not a detriment to the movie, but if there is one flaw in it, it is the cliches that are bedridden in the old traditional Mission Impossible formula. There is one sequence of the film, though, that is so awesome in a tunnel where there, in like four and a half minutes, there are five separate twists. And they all make sense, they all are built up well, they all are strategically placed, they all seem well with the narrative, and they're all brilliantly paced. And they all happen in a, a sequence of like five minutes, like I said. It's absolutely awesome. I mean, it's stuff like this, it, when it comes to pacing and story and flow and momentum, this is a movie that's quite impressive with how it builds itself up and lets itself go. A lot of good action movies, kind of like John Wick, they build up the dam. They build it up, they build it up, they build it up, and then the dam breaks. The movie lets the dam break, and then the water just flows out of the dam, and that's what makes a good action movie. When the movie builds itself up naturally enough to where when the dam finally does break, the water flows and creates chaos, and the chaos is warranted because the movie built itself up, which is awesome. Action movies need patience. They do. This movie has some patience in it. The, the plot has patience. The sequencing of the action scenes makes sense. It takes its time in some regard. It builds itself up so that when it does unleash itself, it makes sense for the narrative. Most ADD action movies don't take the time to do this these days, which is why I, like I said, I loved this movie. This movie is a ride, it is a roller coaster where you will fly out of your chair. You will fly out of the roller coaster train. You will sue the theme park because it is that good. It is so intense and so adrenalizing and just fills you with this masculinity where you're just like, you walk out of this movie and you're just like, Pow! you're just like ready to go. You could just beat the shit out of anyone that walks out of the movie theater with you. I wouldn't recommend it because I did it, but the the movie itself just gives you this angst, this girth, this mm, adrenaline, which action movies don't do anymore. Um, and I loved it. I really did. I loved this movie. I am a strict purveyor of rating movies out of 10. I would give Mission Impossible Fallout a very, very solid 9 out of 10. And I would suggest all of you to have a couple drinks and watch this film and let Tom Cruise get your ass kicked. Let him kick it for you. I would be, I would let Tom Cruise kick the shit out of me for $12 just to see this movie again. This is an excellent movie. I hope that Tom Cruise keeps making these movies. Even when he is in a wheelchair jumping off buildings, I would love it. Because people don't have the balls to make movies like this anymore. As I said, this is John Cox, the movie alcoholic. God, these reviews. <clears throat> the more I drink, the, the harder it gets to actually do this. Maybe I should change my format. But guess what? I'm not. Other reviewers aren't doing this, all right? So every review that I do on my channel, don't worry. I'm going to at least have a six-pack before I review every movie and you will be able to see the true passion that I have for this stuff because that's what this does. This, When I see a good movie, it just unleashes the passion I have for this craft, for this... This is a dying craft, guys. It's a dying craft. When's the last time that you went to the movies? Tell me. When's the last time you went to the movies? When's the last time you felt like you needed to go to the movies? It's dying. It's dying. Movies like this give me hope that, hey, guess what? Cinema may survive after all. We'll find out. Tom Cruise, please, please don't go away. Please. I'm pretty sure that he can't die. So at least we got that going for us. Scientology is probably a big purveyor of that. So as long as this guy is alive, maybe we'll still have actual action movies being made in Hollywood.
Is there anything else I want to say? No. I'll see you for Mission Impossible 7. This has been John Cox with The Movie Alcoholic. I appreciate your viewership. Hopefully this channel takes off. Like I said, this is my first one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And maybe when I'm a big, uh, fancy, dumbass movie star slash YouTube star, you can um, say you were one of the first to view me reviewing a movie. And I thought, you know, nothing better than to take a chance to review this movie because, as I said, this is a fabulous action movie. They aren't making movies like this anymore, and I would give this a solid 9 out of 10. See it immediately, get a six-pack before you watch it, and enjoy the ridiculous, pure, awesome masculinity of adrenaline-fueled action filmmaking. Because this shit is dying. It's dying. Enjoy it while we have it. I'm John Cox. This is the Movie Alcoholic. Thank you for joining me. Oh. Oh. Alright. Time to order some Chinese.